Yeah, I, I really love to reflect on um, the difference that uh, coming to the Balance View training has made in my life and the difference that coming to know the nature of reality and the nature of um, intelligence has made to my life. And um, I think I could probably best sum it up by saying something that now I actually see that the nature of reality is a seamless beneficial flow and that everything that I think and I feel and I sense and I experience is simply that dynamic flow of beneficial energy. Um, and that through this training, through participating in what we call the Four Mainstays, which is the Balanced View Training, um, that becomes more and more my everyday lived experience, wherever I am and whoever I'm with and whatever I'm doing. And um, it's very interesting to look at the details of that and to see, well, well practically what's changed, how, you know, how, how is it different from how it was before. And um, knowing the nature of reality as being a vast expanse as recognizing the nature of our intelligence as being this sky-like, completely open expanse, inclusive of all experience or data streams as, as a term that we use here, just to simplify everything. So there is an open intelligence, um, and if you just stop thinking for a moment, and recognize what remains when you stop thinking, there's an alertness, there's a clarity, the, the ability to know, cognizance that's naturally present and then within this open expanse of intelligence or mind there is this stream of data this stream of experience so anything you can perceive or label or describe um, thoughts emotions sensations whatever you describe it as and that these thoughts emotions and sensations this stream of data appears spontaneously so there's no way that I can predict what thought I'm going to have next or what experience I'm going to feel or what sensation in my body is suddenly going to um, arise. And um, not only do they appear spontaneously, but they self-release naturally. So like a rainbow appearing in space, um, it appears quite effortlessly and then resolves quite naturally without any effort needing to be done. And um, in short moments of just stopping the habitual describing of everything, the trying to pin everything down and put it into these boxes of categories that we've learned to describe things, and just allowing it to flow on by as it's already doing. Um, that's why it's so easy, it's not, a, it's not a struggle or a challenge. The struggle or the challenge comes with trying to manipulate or change this flow of experience. So a short moment of just allowing it to be as it is allows us to see it for what it is, allowing, it to see, allowing us to see the actual nature of our experience, arising spontaneously and then self-releasing naturally. And so just having this experience, this insight, this instinctive recognition, and then applying that in a practical way to all of our experience changes everything. And the reason that it changes everything is because you're seeing things for actually how they are not how we've been told they are and not how we've been behaving as if they are. And that is as if everything has an independent nature. So somehow we're over here and then there are our thoughts, there are our emotions, there are people, places and things that are somehow over there and that we need to manage them, we need to control them, we need to make them look in a particular way. Um, they can really deeply affect us and in a short moment of allowing everything to be as it is, we see that that's just simply not true. There is nothing that can be found to have a nature independent, apart or separate from the open intelligence by which it's known. And in a short moment of allowing our experience to be as it is, we get to see for ourselves whether that's true or not. And so when I began to relax for short moments, I began to see that whatever I was thinking, feeling or sensing actually was this dynamic energy of open intelligence and that it did arise spontaneously and it did release, self-release naturally, whatever the description was. 
and I saw that my habit or the way that I trained myself and trained to use my intelligence or my mind was to focus in on the descriptions and to try and do something with them. So to think about them, to um, indulge in them, so to build up big stories about a particular thought. So um, that might be the thought, um, and that was definitely one I was familiar with and familiar with making stories about, is I don't like people telling me what to do. Um, I also had lots of stories around um, being criticised. So who is, is there anyone here that likes being criticised? <laughs> I really didn't like it. I really didn't like it and I really didn't like being told what to do. Um, also, I had lots of thoughts about um, not wanting to tell other people what to do. I, did, I didn't, really didn't like that because the sensations that came up around that were things that I'd labelled and uh, learned to describe as being negative. So I would feel awkward, I would feel embarrassed, I would feel um, um, like, like a sense of um, like maybe people think I'm arrogant because I'm telling them what to do and all, all of these things I'd learned to describe as things that I shouldn't be feeling or I shouldn't be experiencing. So what I needed to do then was to manage or try to manage my experience so that I didn't feel these things, um, awkwardness and embarrassment and things like that. Um, the only problem was is that uh, I couldn't do it. That's the only flaw in that scheme of living life is that it was a complete failure. And no matter how hard I tried, um, people criticised me. And no matter how hard I tried to avoid situations, people still would tell me what to do. And so what's interesting then is to apply this simple practice of short moments when I'm in those situations where people are critical of me or I feel like they're being critical or um, people are telling me what to do or I find myself in a situation where I need to tell somebody what to do. Um, and then everything can still come up, those same feelings of awkwardness, that same... Um, so when somebody tells me what to do, I feel there's a sort of immediate sense of contraction and I begin to describe what's going on, um, don't tell me what to do, I don't like being told what to do, I, I wish you wouldn't do that. And that was the way that I'd always managed that experience, was to indulge in all of those stories and usually, um, mostly just in my mind. I, I, sometimes I would speak up about that but mostly it was just in my mind. I would feel all this resentment and then I would then direct that resentment towards that person. And so now I saw that I actually had a choice with what I did with those experiences and those sensations. And it was to apply the practice of short moments of complete relaxation and to allow all of those quite compelling and quite intense descriptions also just to flow on by to apply what I knew was the actual nature of reality to reality, rather than continuing on as if I didn't know. And this is the training up of open intelligence. This is the training up in recognizing that our intelligence is, is actually this completely vast sky-like openness in which all data appears spontaneously and self-release naturally and, and, and don't leave a trace in this sky-like nature of mind, like the flight path of a bird in the sky. It doesn't leave a trace in that complete openness of, of perception. And so the way for me to apply that was a short moment of just relaxing completely and seeing that the immediate tension, the awkwardness, the, the closing down was simply due to emphasis on these thoughts and these emotions. So to directly apply this practice of short moments when I feel awkwardness or I feel embarrassment or I feel this um, resentment in describing something or somebody or my own sensations or experiences, to allow it to be as it is, just for an instant. And in that instant what happens is that it opens up. It's recognised instinctively to be this dynamic energy of open intelligence. And what is recognised and what is the most profound thing to see is that I can allow everything to be as it is. In the same way that I learn to close in and 
clamp down and contract into these descriptions, I can now learn to open up, to expand these descriptions and to allow them to be actually what they are, which is simply this dynamic potential energy, this energy to be of great benefit. And so in the examples that I'm using, what I see is that from the vantage of completely relaxed openness, from that vantage of seeing the indivisible nature of all experience, of all descriptions, this great intelligence is accessed immediately. And I can then see, well, how do I actually want to respond and act in this, in this situation? Rather than being um, um, a, a victim or like, like a puppet on a string, so as soon as I feel um, embarrassment or awkwardness or resentment, then I have to react in this knee-jerk way, which is just such a limited way to react and made me feel awkward, made me feel even more uncomfortable, made me feel even more isolated. And um, so what I see now is that everything that I think, everything that I feel, everything that I experience is an opportunity for me to get more familiar with the vast expanse of all-inclusive open intelligence and its incredible unpredictable display of beneficial potency. Whatever the conventional description may be, what it actually is is the dynamic energy of open intelligence. And in a short moment of allowing it to be as it is, that's what I instinctively recognize. So it's so, so simple. But the, the power and the brilliance of this is revealed in the actual application in everyday life. And um, what I see with gossip and just speaking about people, and gossip can be very negative and critical, but it can also kind of be less overtly negative and critical. So you're just speaking about someone without necessarily being nasty or mean or critical. Although I see for myself that quite often there was a, you know, that nastiness or meanness did creep in there in some way. But it's not always necessarily like that. Um, what I've seen that's changed in myself and my own experience is that um, as I allow the urge to speak about things, to also be recognized as a data stream, then my speech naturally changes and aligns more and more with the completely beneficial nature of reality. I see that rather than being a victim to every urge and every, um, every movement or every time that I feel I have to say something, through again applying short moments, then the insights into the way that speech can be used also open up. And I see that even when gossiping is not overtly critical or negative, what I'm doing is actually reinforcing um, a reality that simply isn't true. I'm reinforcing a reality that is based in conventional descriptions on a world that is a subject and there are all of these objects that are out there, that are separate, that are different, that are um, other than I am. When I relax completely and I recognize the completely inseparable nature, that nothing can be found to have a nature separate or apart from open intelligence, then I see that I can use my speech in other ways. Rather than perpetuating the story of this world populated by all of these subjects and objects, all living in conflict with each other, all with their problems, all with their flaws, and I relax completely and rely on open intelligence, I see that my speech can actually express the indivisible perfection of reality as it actually is. As I know it is each time I allow data to be as they are. And so I see that that change in the way that I use my speech comes about as I gain confidence in open intelligence. And the practice of short moments is very, very powerful. But it's even more potent and powerful when it's coupled with the rest of the support mechanism, with this educational program. So the same way that we educated ourselves in describing a world that was full of despair and conflict and lack and um, misery and pain. Instead, we can recognize through education that actually the nature of reality is completely wide open. 
It includes all of these descriptions that we've learned to label as negative, but those do not define it. They're included within it. They're subsumed within this greater category of intelligence that is simply what's looking right now through your eyes. It's not mysterious or far away or esoteric or difficult. It's immediately accessible just by a, a short moment of relaxation. But by also incorporating the education in the nature of mind, so reading texts um, that simply point out the way that things are in a very clear, direct way, for me was so powerful. Hearing people speak about the nature of reality was like hearing... It just it was, it was all so obvious. I'd come to these open meetings, it was like, that's obvious, that's the way it is. Because I was just hearing the confirmation of what I had always really known. Um, but to hear it spoken about and to hear it expressed was so confirming and so powerful, rather than continuing to hear descriptions about reality that simply weren't true and, and never felt true. It always felt like there was something that wasn't being spoken about, something that was missing from all of the descriptions I was hearing about anything, myself, other people, the nature of reality, criticism, wh whatever the topic was. So by introducing ourselves to the actual nature of reality, we exalt all of our data streams. We empower ourselves with open intelligence. And so by participating, so today we have a one-day training where you can spend time with these texts and see the effect that that has for you. You know, you test it out, and I, that's what I did, and I'm still testing it out, and I'm still finding more and more wonder, more and more treasure in everything that I sense and feel and experience. And that's exactly the way I wanted to live my life. Everything is an adventure. Everything is an exploration. Everything is this, this island of gold.